Hello everybody, I'm Steve and welcome to Greenside Up, the home edition. I'm in the greenhouse again because it's time to sow um, all my warm weather crops and the things like the melons, the courgettes, the squashes, the beans. So we're going to crack on with that. I'll just give you a quick little tour of what's in here at the moment uh, and then we'll crack on with the sowing. So in here at the moment we've got um, the peppers. They're picking up now, they're doing fairly well since I've potted them on. They might have been in stale compost previously, but they've been potted on for about a week and a half or so now, and they're perking up and getting off, so that's good. That's a root trainer set there. It's labeled as incredible. That will be for the sweet corn, and we'll get to the sweet corn in a minute. A few spare tomatoes down here. We'll be potting them on soon. Some herbs. Two different types of cucumber, one of them is for outside, the other one is a much smaller yielding uh, cucumber and that's for indoors, so inside the polytunnels. My Ildi tomatoes there in the, in the small trays, they need potting on and of course my Crimson Crush, I don't know which is best for you to see, probably there. They're doing remarkably well in there and I've got a few flowers and bits and bobs in these little trays. And over here, I've got that silly early test of the beans. Um, they've, they've done pretty well. They've come out of the trays there. So I will be planting them tomorrow in the, at the allotment. Um, so yeah, we'll come back to them tomorrow. A few flowers there, a few more flowers. The larkspur that isn't doing anything and my appalling uh, celeriac. Hopefully they'll pick up soon as well. Right, we'll get on with some sowing. Right, first of all, I've got a little pot of water here and this is the sweet corn seed for that root trainer I showed you a minute ago, where they're all ready to go. And this is sweet corn Incredible F1. I've grown this now for about five or six years, I think. And it's probably, it's the best one I've tried. There are a couple of other varieties that uh, are meant to be good called Swift and Lark. But I found that they're just mostly just sweet and not much actual sweet corn flavour. Um, that goes back a little. It's less sweet, but it's more of a sweet corn flavour. And when you've picked it fresh, which is the best time to eat it, it's fantastic. And it's it's plenty sweet enough. Slather that in butter and you're, you're off and running. So I'm going to leave them to soak for 24 hours and I'll sow them tomorrow. I'll just drop them into the root trainer and uh, they'll be off and running fairly quickly. So the next, what I've got here is, again, some more root trainers. And I've been sent some beans. Now, I do apologise if I get this wrong, but this is from a guy called John, I believe. I did mark the name down, but I could be wrong. I do hope I got that wrong. Uh, right, I mean, <laughs> not wrong. But these are a butter bean and I'm sowing these in the root trainers here. I know some people soak the bean seeds. I don't get on very well with that. I've tried it. It's not for me. I can't seem to get on with it at all. So I, uh, I'll just stick with the traditional way of just planting the seeds. So they're the butter beans. Now I've also been sent some beans and some peas by somebody else and I know this for a fact because the letter's in here. I won't read you the letter but it's just telling me that what these are and that she's also included these beans. She meant to send me these. These are Carlin peas. People up north, especially in the northeast, will know these. They're a maple pea and there's a bit of history associated with them but they're generally eaten um, around Easter or on bonfire night and um, you eat them with a good dosing of vinegar. There is a recipe in, that she has included and these are from Pauline, a subscriber on, on Greenside Up and she sent a little bit about, there's a little recipe there and a little bit of history about the Carlin pea which I think is lovely so thank you for that Pauline and I'll be sowing those tomorrow at the allotment along with planting those beans those bean plants but these beans that she sent me here are called gigants 
G I G A N T E S, and apparently they're a Greek bean. And she lets them dry on the plant and um, uses them as a butter bean. So I thought it'd be handy. I'm going to do both there. I'll grow them at the allotments, both sets, the butter beans and the gigants. And it should make a useful comparison. So that's those. Again, thank you, Pauline, for those. And if it's right, thank you, John, for the butter beans. And I'll get those call in soon tomorrow. Right, for the rest of the main crop of beans, I've got two different types. I've got climbing French bean cobra and a climbing bean blauhild, I think it's called. Much smaller peas, these. Just going to poke those in. I always try and, and sow beans on their edge if you can. It stops water collecting on the top of the bean once you've watered them and staying there and then rotting the actual bean. Whether it works or not is one of those subjects of controversy that people talk about. But as I don't find it difficult to do, I see no reason not to do it. So that's the Blauhild. And then the next one is the Cobra. And again, it's the same crack with that. I'll just pop in those in. And then I'll just sprinkle a little bit of compost over the top, water them and leave them on the propagator. Once I've got germination, I'll take them off the heat and put them on the bench here. So there you go, that's not difficult to get do. And they're all in the root trainers, so they'll get a very good start on their growing year. So that's all my beans done. Sweet corns are in soak, take them away. Next up, look at this, it's like blue peter, this one I made earlier. <laughs> so I've got squash here, and this is a wolf and butternut, butternut squash. I tried, uh, tried to do something different every year. I've grown these before and they work well. And I've also grown and the butternut squashes have grown hunter that's also a very good variety now these vine out and the vines can be anywhere between 15 and 20 foot long so you do need space but what i tend to do is once i've planted the plant about three foot in every direction from where the plant is i'll put a cane in the ground and then i will spiral the vines around those canes so you can keep it confined in a small area and then towards the end of the season when you've got the squashes on the plant just flatten all the foliage down leaving the the squashes exposed to the sunlight and they're ripe and lovely nice cheat way we'll do the melon last because i want to talk about them a little bit this is courgette and this is a a yellow or a golden one I don't know why, but my missus thinks that the uh, yellow ones taste better. Personally, I don't see any difference. And I'm sowing two in each cell of these, with all of these seeds that I'm sowing here, so that if one fails, the other one will come along and fill it. And later on, when they've all germinated, I'll pinch out to leave one in each cell. So that's the courgette yellow. Now, with courgette ye yellow courgettes, so the only difference I've ever seen is that you can get mildew on the leaves with the yellow courgettes. Why that is, I don't know. If you do get that, have yourself a little spray bottle, the sort of ones that you might use for cleaning around the house, and then 
with the fungus on the leaves or the mildew on the leaves just spray it with a bit of milk that'll cure that problem for you now melon there's a, a lot that can be said about this I'm very fortunate in that just across the road from me there's a nurseryman and he grows all these plants for for sale in packs right across the north and I've seen actually Tony Smith over in the northeast with a few plant packs that have come from this nursery over here in Cumbria but he's told me about melon in the past and about how difficult they can be to grow and the way he related it to me he says they can die with the slightest change in temperature he said it can be as much as taking the plants out of the polytunnel to put in the van them getting a slight chill and not enough to kill them so what I've done in the past is I've got one of those big plastic storage boxes the big clear ones and I've uh, opened it up in here, put the plants in, put the lid on and taken the plants to the allotment in that box and only taken them out when I've got into the polytunnel so I'm keeping any possible drafts off them and that seems to have worked for me up to now and the reason I've done that is because all the melon seeds I've ever bought in the past they always come in a pack of either 6 or 10 so you've got limited options, you haven't got much option to re -sow. now this year I'm growing these these are from premier seed and it's Hale's best jumbo there's a hundred seeds in there and I've just sown 12 so this gives me scope to try to sow them down in the allotment polytunnel um, because if I can get them going down there that would eliminate that problem of the transportation I know many people do so there's straight away in the polytunnel but if you're in a warmer climate you can get away with it up here in Cumbria not so much but there we go that's that's all those so <laughs> so that's it for this one I'll see you back down the allotment tomorrow morning take care all stay safe see you soon <laughs>